Welcome back to PSC Stack Bytes. This is the fourth episode of a series about extending Azure Active Directory resources using Microsoft Graph. And today I'm going to introduce you to the schema extension functionality, which allows us to provide custom properties for resources in Azure Active Directory based on a strongly typed model. In fact, those properties can be fully typed based on a set of available data types like binary, boolean, date time, integer and string. Whenever we create a scheme extension, we have to provide a unique name, which can either be made of a qualified domain and verified domain for your company, followed by a unique name for your schema, or can only be a schema name, and Microsoft will slightly change that unique schema name, adding a uniqueness factor at the beginning of the name. When you define such uh, schemas, you can have multiple statuses for your schemas. The initial status is in development, meaning that you can add, update or delete properties to the schema, and when you are in development mode, you are the only one allowed to see your schema. Then you can release the schema and make it available, which means that your schema will be visible to any other Azure Active Directory tenant all over the globe. And once you are in the available status, you can only add new properties, but you cannot change or delete the already existing ones. If you want to remove a schema extension, you can deprecate it. So you will put the schema in the deprecated status and the schema will not be available anymore, meaning that it will not be readable anymore. But all of the existing resources which were extended using your schema will keep their extensions available and you will be able to still read and write those extension properties for those already extended resources. Keep into account that the schema extensions allow you to filter entities by the properties, so this is really powerful whenever you want to filter resources based on those custom properties. And in order to write the extensions to a target resource, you will clearly have to have the write permissions on the target resource. The resources that you can extend using the schema extensions are, for example, the user, the group, the event in a calendar of a user or of a group, tasks of Microsoft To Do, task lists of Microsoft To Do, as well as application, contacts, and stuff like that. So, plenty of options for ISV and partners willing to build custom solutions on top of Microsoft 365 and Azure Active Directory. So, let me move to the demo environment. Let me show you how you can work with this extensibility model in action. So, let's use Postman to see how we can play with these schema extensions. First of all, we can get the whole list of schema extensions defined in any tenant, uh, making a GET request for graphmics.com uh, slash the version of graph that you want to target and followed by schema extensions. If we make such a request, we will get back a JSON list of all the schemas. And as you can see, we have schemas from many different uh, tenants and organizations. Because, as I said, when a schema is marked as available, it will become visible to anyone else. Now, let's say that we want to create our own schema. I will make a POST request targeting the same endpoint as before, so schema extensions. And I will say that this is my unique ID for my schema extension. This is just a description. I want to target the user resources and I want to provide four additional custom properties. The preferred color, which will be an integer, the favorite drink and favorite car, which will be two strings, and likes wine, which will be a boolean. By executing such a POST request targeting the scheme extensions and point, I will get back as the response a unique ID for my just created schema. So let me copy this ID because, for example, we can use it to get back our schema definition. So I can make a GET for the schema extension and point providing the unique ID of my schema extension and I will be able to get back the definition of my schema extension right here. But we can also use it. Right now, my schema extension, as you can see, is still in development, so I'm the only one able to see it. But if I will go, for example, to a specific user object like, like could be this one, I can make a patch request targeting that user object and providing the fact that I want to extend this specific extension property, providing the ID of my schema extension and providing the value for all of the extension properties that I defined. If I will make such a patch request, I will get back just a 204. 
but I can then read my user and I can select in the list of properties that I want to retrieve also the uh, schema extension properties that I just defined. And as you can see for my user, I can see that these are my extensions, precisely the values that I just saved inside my user resource object. Of course, we can also clean up a user object. So we can say that we want to put this extension to null if we want to clean up the user. And again, making a patch and providing null as the value, we will clean it up. And in fact, if I will read it again, we will not see any more any extension. And as long as we are in development, we can also target with delete method the ID, the unique ID of our schema extension. And we can completely remove the scheme extension from our tenant. And because it was in development, we are allowed to do that. If it was in the available status, we would only be able to do the uh, deprecation and make it in the deprecated mode rather than deleting it. So it is a really powerful functionality, but keep into account that everyone else will be able to see your scheme extension. So this is really useful whenever you are an ISV selling your solutions to a lot of customers and you want to have your scheme extension available by default in any target tenant. Otherwise, most likely other options which are less uh, visible, uh, publicly visible, are a better choice for you. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. And remember, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.